You ever see a, a news announcement or a tweet or an image or just something very small and you just know, you know immediately, this thing is gonna spawn a lot of videos and Twitter commentary. Well, here we go. It's time for a new New Warriors and start. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, hey, if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We're going to look at the new New Warriors. That's going to be annoying to say after about five minutes, but there is a new New Warriors series. It was uh, more more of it was revealed today. Although we've been seeing some some preview art, the RB Silva kind of trailer art for a while, and a bit of backstory before we get into the team and kind of what it all means and uh, and what people are absolutely going to be talking about. Um, a writer, Daniel Kibblesmith, uh, this is the a writer from uh, the Stephen Colbert, uh, the, yeah, the late show with Stephen Colbert, and um, he is a writer and uh, superstar artist Luciano Vicino, uh, who did Ironheart, um, and a pretty good Ironheart. In all fairness, um, the, uh, it, it was, it was you know, some nice crisp art, uh, decent stuff, uh, fit the characters well, all that stuff, uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that. All fine, but this is all spinning out of Outlawed, which is a storyline that I would call Civil War Light. And this is where the government decides that teen superheroes need to be regulated. They shouldn't be putting on costumes and running all over the place. Why this wasn't more of an immediate reaction during the uh, the original thing that sparked the, the whole Civil War, which was uh, you know, Stanford uh, getting blown up. Was it Stanford? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, getting blown up as part of the New Warriors filming the reality show. Here we are now, uh, to almost two decades later, not quite. Um, and we have a new New Warriors team of teens rebelling against this government, trying to control them. They, they may not be able to drink. They may just be able to get a driver's license, but damn it, they need to be fighting crime as heroes. So the new New Warriors introduces a new team and also will uh, contain at least some of the key old characters, Night Thrasher and uh, Firestar and Amorita, Speedball, Rage, uh, some, of the, some of the characters people recognize from the New Warriors. Um, what's interesting here is that people are, are kind of, uh, I'm going to get this out of the way first. People are acting like this new team is definitely the end of the world, that this is uh, spitting on the legacy of New Warriors. I just want to, for the moment, point out that there's been... Uh, basically, this will be the sixth New Warriors series that's land, that's launched, and there's been a few more. The um, Marvel Now initiative back in 2014 was kind of the last one, and it did not do well. It had a character, um, Water Snake and Hummingbird, and and it just it, it, it none, no part of it uh, terribly sold well. People didn't pay attention to it. So unlike other things where you have like a really beloved property, I look at things like Thundercats, where you have. Uh, for, for good or bad, you have an old property that has a lot of good nostalgic value. It's a certain way. And then you have a new thing like Thundercats Roar, which is is nothing like the original. It's, it's a radical departure. The New Warriors has been drifting into this uh, place for quite some time. A lot of people are remembering it purely as the uh, you know 1989 kind of uh, original, original team, which uh, a lot of people who are kind of comic fans coming into things, Tom DeFalco uh, created that. Um, was, uh, you know, that's their memory of what the New Warriors are. And they have a lot of good memories of Night Thrasher and some of that stuff. If you pick up those issues today and you read them, they're not um, they're not brilliant. I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, I mean, there's some good stories in there. I'm not throwing any shade on it, but it just, it, it's not, it maybe holds up better in the mind than on the paper. So anyway, we have this limited series. And in the limited series, we're introducing a all new team. And this all-new team um, introduces the following, and we're going to put them up here. Here's uh, the first character, um, which is a Trailblazer. So Trailblazer, um, kind of uh, right out the gate, the goal here, her power is she's a got a magic backpack, and it's got a pocket dimension in it, so she can basically uh, pull anything she wants out of that backpack and start using it. Now, if you've watched My Hero Academia, there's a character called Momo Yaratsu. Um, that feels like what this character is. Uh, basically can create things. Uh, this is pulling stuff out of a backpack. Um, she notes that it's not always under her control, and it's, um, you know, she gets power from God, but not the God you're thinking of. Um, she's in a group home, foster kid, volunteering at a senior center, and, um, you know, then she becomes kind of thrust into power 
against herself. So she's obviously a, a um, body positive uh, hero is what we're going with here. And, and that's fine. Um, I mean, this is a lot of people are going to make jokes about this. I, I, unfortunately, fortunately, we'll see how interesting the character is. That's, that's fine. Um, the second character here, we've got screen time. And this is the first one where, where in my mind, at least, um, there's a lot of names and things here that, uh, they, you know, they quickly point out, Hey, you know, screen time is, uh, you know, is, is kind of a, a pun on the fact that kids have restricted screen time. And, you know, so his power is that he's a meme obsessed super teen whose brain became connected to the internet after being exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things people are going to make fun of, uh, of this announcement, but to me, no matter what's coming next, experimental internet gas, um, it, you know, I, okay. Um, anyway, now he can see augmented reality, real time maps. He can instantly Google any fact, you know, basically if he had a phone, um, this, this is like, he's a phone. So he's a phone and he's got his name is screen time and, and, um, experimental internet gas. Uh, okay. Then we got B negative. Uh, B negative is a, uh, Morbius uh, type character, living vampire was exposed to Morbius's blood as a child in a life-saving procedure. And now he ages like a regular kid, but he's got the same Morbius abilities and he's a punker. He's, um, obsessed with the music and attitude of classic long past decades, like the nineties and the two thousands. Oh, screw you, Marvel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Long past decades, like like 10 years ago. <laughs> ah, ah, bastards. Anyway, he's a, he's both a goth kid and, um, you know, he's, you know, he, he does his thing. Um, and he, he drinks blood or does he, and he's got, uh, he's got vampire powers, uh, and he's kind of glam. And then comes, we're going back to the crazy days. We got snowflake and safe space. Um, and here again, the the press release notes that um, this is kind of taking opportunity of, of current kind of internet teams, the culture and the optics. They see superheroes as a post ironic med meditation on using violence to combat bullying, um, and they're streaming it, and and they're very much tied into today's Twitter culture. Um, Snowflake can materialize snowflake shaped uh, shuriken projectiles, and Safe Space can materialize pink force fields but can't be in them himself. So he can only, you know, protect others. I think there's a character in Miss Marvel actually that has a similar kind of, kind of deal. Anyway, they're twins. Um, and one is uh, safe space is kind of a stereotypical jock. He can create uh, force fields and snowflake is uh, non-binary goes by uh, they, them. And she, she can create the, or sorry, she, um, they, them can create the, the snowflakes. Um, the connotations of the word snowflakes, reads the article, in our culture right now are something fragile. And this is a character who is turning it into something sharp. Um, again, a lot of people are going to go on to this as being, uh, you know, woke, woke apocalypse, woke, woke, woke pageddon, uh, lots of things with woke in it. Um, I view this maybe a little bit differently. Um, and the question is this, will this comic sell? And to sell, it needs to attract an audience. Is it going to attract classic, uh, original New Warriors fans? Probably not, but who knows? You know, uh, the storytelling could get there. Um, the, the original New Warriors, I want to again point out, a lot of people have happy memories of them, but, you know, the idea that there was going to be a skateboard, you know, vigilante called Night Thrasher was very much kind of uh, ripped from the current headlines and not in a good way. One of the things that, that comics has the disadvantage of is by the time you're creating these characters, doing the concept art, writing the story, putting it out in a comic and out it goes, several months have passed. At best, you're, you're looking at least six months from idea to in paper in shops have passed. And the challenge there is uh, the world is moving faster and faster. And these kinds of uh, memes and ideas and things age very, very, very quickly. So taking a part, you know, taking aside for the fact that you know, maybe you, these characters seem ultra, uh, cliche, ultra stereotypical, whatever you want to call it. Um, the problem that, that we have is, you know, today, if you go out into public and you say, you know, snowflake and safe space and screen time and these kinds of things, it's no longer seen as edgy, 
internet culture. And I think people who live in New York or the big metro cities, they should know this if they're, if they're you know, getting out or paying attention to, to how quickly things are moving. The idea of a meme-obsessed hero, well, that's a cool 2018 idea. Snowflake is played out. Uh, generally, I, when I see people saying, hey, Snowflake, uh, on Twitter, I see the response being, okay, boomer, because things have moved on, which means six months from now when they fight you know, Boomer Man, the, their arch nemesis, um, that's also going to be played out because you just can't let that amount of time go by. So of this, this collection of heroes, you know, Be Negative, the Mobius uh, character, and Trailblazer with the Magic Backpack are probably the ones that at least feel the most um, like they're going to survive past 12 months of, of time. And the last version of New Warriors had the same problem where it was trying to hook into the internets and all the cool things that the kids are talking about. It's super hip. But the, the challenge is when you're writing a comic, you got to either, one, uh, be relevant, be like super on top of the current culture and what people are feeling, which is very difficult because things are moving so fast. Or you have to write a really timeless classic story that is going to, re it's going to ignore kind of whatever the current fads are and just live forever and, and just be relevant. Or you have to be so ironic that the, joke, the, the book comes off knowing that it's behind the times, knowing that you know, this stuff is aging probably poorly, but it's, it's funny and, and humorous anyway. The recent Wonder Twins book by DC attempted to do this, and I do think it will age okay, even though there was a lot of kind of, you know, a lot of criticism about that book and various things it did, it still at least tried to abstract some of the humor out so that it was, uh, it was not so connected to right now. How will this book do? Obviously, it's not sitting in front of me. I can't read it. I can only go by the press release and what's being written. But the paragraphs uh, that are describing the characters do not leave you with a lot of optimism. It, it leaves you uh, a little bit concerned that this, this seems like a cash grab. It seems like a, um, here's something that we're just going to do and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it'll all work out. Um, character designs, I mean, fine. Um, you know, there, there are definitely some, some day glow colors, very, very bright um, you know, some neons, the fact that we're going to bring the, uh, the new team in to kind of mentor them a little bit. Okay. Uh, no problems there. Sure thing. Um, the challenge again, the RB Silva cover looks, looks quite good. Uh, reluctant heroes drawn into the fray. Fine. It's just, uh, if the, will the writing read like the, the paragraphs read like, uh, this stuff, because this stuff reads like somebody who's very disconnected from modern culture writing a book that's supposed to be right on the bleeding edge of culture. And I think that's the problem. Now, people are going to complain about the non-binary part. I mean, sure, uh, if the character is is amazing, it will certainly surpass whatever uh, pronouns it's uh, using. Um, if it's not, then that's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And it becomes an anchor rather than a, a you know a drift. So I'm giving probably the, the, the most... Uh, fair assessment I can do with this. Um, I think that Marvel in particular and DC to a lesser extent, they do these books that feel um, feel like they're out of touch. It feels like it, they're trying to be in touch. It's like Poochie from, from Simpsons or just, it feels like it's trying to be in touch. And I think it's not as in touch as the writers, the editors, people at Marvel think it is. And then they are thus surprised that it doesn't sell or do well. Now, this is a limited series, so it's going to come and go. And there'll be lots of promises. These characters can show up other places. And maybe some of the writer, you know, if uh, um, if the writer gets picked up and, and goes off and does, uh, you know, Danny Kibblesmith, you know, becomes a new writer of the champions after e-viewing, then maybe these characters all show up again or, or who knows. But uh, chances are it, it feels like something is going to come and go and be forgotten. And I want to stress, this is not something new. Marvel for decades has had comics come and go, and the ones that go and are forgotten tend to be ones that have characters that are kind of hooked into whatever is cool with the kids at the time, but when they're published are actually not cool with the kids anymore. And a year later when they're trying to get this stuff into trades is like painful, painful reading. Uh, there's lots of examples. This has nothing to do with, you know, quote unquote, woke culture or any of that. It's just... It's just tone deaf to what the current system looks like. And, and that's what this feels like. But hope springs a kernel, eternal, a kernel, whatever. The Eternals movie is coming out. So there you go, Marvel. There's another plug for you. Um, these, this is the new, new warriors. And they will be on your shelves 
very shortly and and probably will be on the shelves when well i mean assuming you can get to the comic shop that's such the time we live in anyway um hey what do you think does this team appeal to you what's the what's the potential draw what's the potential failure if you're going to come in and say no this sucks please um tell me the one part of this that could make it better the thing that actually could um turn this book around what would make it better for you is there something that would make it better for you? Um, and no, the answer not you know, blowing the ball up or throwing them in the sun either. I mean, again, almost any concept in the hands of a talented writer who's in touch with their audience can work. But those are hard things to pull off. Will this book do it? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> never say never. Track record indicates no. But we will see Marvel. We will see new New Warriors. Ah, uh, experimental internet gas. Thanks for listening.